Once near the holy city of Banaras, there was a forest. In the deep, deep of that forest lived a herd of deer. Their leader was the banyan deer. He was very beautiful. Stars fell from his dark eyes, gold from his skin. He was kind and just, someone you could always trust. His herd had nothing to fear. Till one day... There came a deer with news. Bad news. The king and his men were coming to hunt them. The banyan deer remembered to warn his friend, the branch deer, and his herd. Run, friends. Run for your life. The king and his men are on the hunt. The leaders of the deer stood thinking of a way to escape, for now the forest was no longer safe. In the outer forest, the king's men also stood and talked of ways by which they could escape from this daily task, this waste of time, this neglect of their work. They thought of a plan. They would make a park a beautiful forest park, ringed with a strong wooden fence. <laughs> there, you see, we will drive the deer into this park. <laughs> How easy it was. Now we can hunt them without so much trouble. Let's go, tell the king. They call the king. The king was pleased. I need not hunt the deer anymore, he said. I can hunt the tigers in the forest instead. Then he saw the captive leaders. They were so beautiful. No one shall kill these, the king commanded. Set them free. One of the herd is all I need for my table. But his men were not good hunters. The deer sought the deep of the forest, but the fence was big and strong. The little one's father tried to protect him, but the arrow hit him instead. The leaders of the deer were worried. What shall we do, they said. Too many wounded, too many dead. They won't spare a single head. They then decided on a plan. Each day, in turn, one deer would give himself up, willingly, 
to save the others from harm. To this they all agreed. Next morning the hunters came. The park seemed strangely empty. Mm -hmm. But what was this? A deer giving himself up willingly? The men were amazed. They went to tell the king. The king was amazed. The cook was delighted. And so it went on. One day came the turn of the mother deer. Her little one was so young. The mother was filled with sadness. She went to her leader, the branch deer, and pleaded. Not for herself, but for the little one, who would be left all alone. But he refused. It is your turn. You must go, he said. Unhappy at seeing his mother's tears, the little one ran swiftly to the banyan deer, who had saved him once before. The banyan deer thought and thought. Come what may, he would find a way to save the mother and child. Take your little one. Don't be afraid. So away they went, wild and happy. No, no, the mother cried, can it be true? For proud and beautiful as he was, wise and noble as he was, the banyan deer had placed his head on the block. But it was too late, the men had come. No, not this deer. They remembered the king's instructions. This deer was not to be harmed. They ran to tell the king. The king was surprised. He would not believe them. So away he went to see for himself. Why this? asked the king. I have given you your life. The banyan deer replied, Oh noble king, I could not part a mother from her child. Someone had to give a life, so why not I? The great king was ashamed. I shall no longer kill, he said, but seek the ways of peace. And this you have taught me, O Banyan dear, so noble and so wise. Thank you.